So our agenda for budgeting, I'm going to show you in a demo how to create a new budget in GP. Um, then we're going to create a new budget using the Excel budget wizard. We're going to import a budget from Excel. We're going to open, modify an existing budget, um, export a budget to Excel, delete, view budget data. And then at the end, we're going to talk about a few potential other uses for the GP budget functionality. So there I am. All right. So here is the budget window in GP. How many people use budgets today currently? A fair amount of people. How many of the how many of you guys have budgets budget data in GP? Everybody. Okay, good. And I know um, Amy, you use Forecaster, right? Are you using it? Okay. All right. So budgets are found under the card section on the financial page. So I'm going to click on budgets. Here's a list of budgets that I already have created. So I'm going to create a new budget. I click on the new button. I have two options here. I can create a budget uh, using Microsoft Dynamics GP, or I can use the budget wizard for Excel. I'm going to create one using Microsoft Dynamics GP first. So here I type in my budget name. I pick the year that I want to budget, and then really I just click Save. Um, now this budget is out here, and I can update accounts individually if I wished. So that's not a very fun way to do budgeting, is it? So <laughs> next, I'm going to actually create a budget using the budget wizard for Excel. This makes things a little more automated in GP. So the wizard for Excel walks you through. It asks questions. So here I'm going to name my budget. This time I'm going to create 2018. Sorry, I'm typing one-handed, so I'm a little slow. Here I can do select how to base this budget. I'm going to do it on a fiscal year. And I'm going to pick my year here. So one of the prerequisites for creating a budget for next year is you have to have that year set up in GP. Um, so you have to go to the fiscal periods and actually set that up first. So I'm going to click Next. So here I have a couple of budget calculation methods. I can create a budget based on a historical year percent. So if I wanted to have 3% over, let's say, 2015 or you know 2016 data, I could um, do that. Most often, people choose to do just a blank budget. So we'll do that. I'll click Next. Here I can select if I want to bring in actual amounts. So um, I can you know, see the actual data and base some of my budget information on that. So I'll bring in 2016 actual. And then finally, it's going to ask, what account types do I want? Balance sheet accounts, P&L accounts, unit accounts. I'm going to do P&L budget. So I'll click Next. I'm going to leave this set to all accounts. Um, but you could. If you were doing departmental budgeting, for example, and you wanted to create separate budgets for separate departments, you could export and do one budget per department, email that out, um, and then import those in separately. Like I said, I'm going to do all accounts. All right, so here's my list of all of my P&L accounts. I can check and uncheck 
if I want to drop some accounts and not have them in the budget. So I'll click Next. I'm going to create a new workbook and finish. So here it's asking where do I want to save it. Put it on my desktop. So here we go. The nice thing about creating a blank budget is it imports nicely because it's in the proper format. So um, if you are planning on importing the budget and having the budget in GP, I recommend exporting um, out so you have the proper format. So here we go. We have accounts, descriptions, and then our um, periods. So here I would click, so this is sales. Sales, as you know, always go in at a negative number. Um, all right, so on. So I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to import that back in. So I've entered my budget. People have reviewed it, approved it. So now I'm going to import. So to import, I clicked on the Excel button. And again, the wizard's going to walk me through. So I'm not creating a new budget this time. I'm going to import this back into an existing budget. I'm going to import it into my 2018. I'll browse out my desktop. So here I'll pick the workbook or the worksheet and then finish. So here it comes back in. One of the issues I know that some people have run into in the past when they're importing the budget back in to GP is that um, it does not give you an error or a message. If it doesn't import something in, it doesn't sometimes alert you that um, there was an issue. Has anybody <laughs> run into that where they think they've imported something and it's like, oh, uh, it's not there. Yeah, that's a one of the downfalls of it. So now that I've imported this back in, I can view this information one of a couple of ways. Um, from here, I'm just going to click open. And I'm going to open this. Well, first, I can open it using Excel. And it should open my Excel sheet back up. So here it was. Here's my account, 411102. You notice I didn't show you this prior, but um, it did bring in my actual data on the 2017 tab. So you notice here was the actual data that it brought in. Here's my 2018 budget. So I can look at it that way. I can also open it using Dynamics GP. And so here, if I want to look at that one revenue account that had data, here it is. So one of the things you can do, if something imports in and it imports in wrong or doesn't import at all for an account, you can come right into this window and actually make a change. So I can add or override what's in here. I don't have to re-import from Excel. I can just modify it right here in this window. You know, if it's one or two accounts, it may make sense to do it here versus re-import. But if it's a lot of accounts, obviously probably um, re-importing from Excel would be the better option. So I'm going to click Save. So similar to importing a budget from GP, I can also export. So let's say this 2017 budget um, didn't originate in um, 
in maybe Excel, or maybe it did, and I deleted the Excel sheet off of my computer. So I need to re-export. I can come to the Excel button, click Export to Excel, and it will, right here it's finding where that was, but let's say I want to create a new workbook. And so here I can save it somewhere else, or like I said, if I overwrote it or deleted it, I can recreate it out there so that I have an Excel version. So here it is with the new amount. So a couple other things you can do. With the newer versions of GP, I think with um, 2010 or 2013 maybe, they came out with the option of budget transactions here. So if I needed to update budgets, I could do a budget journal entry basically. Um, so that is an option here. You also have under the inquiry screens, we have some different views. And one of them that I really like is this budget versus actual. So if I pick a particular account, like let's pick our, O2 account. So here I have my actual column and then I have the budget column as well and then variance. So it's a way to kind of look account by account um, at the data. So finally, I want to talk about some other uses for budgets and some creative ways some of our clients are using budgets for things other than budget data. So we have a client who um, their auditors come back and do some audit adjustments at the end of the year for tax purposes. And they want to be able to keep those tax adjustments separate so that they can run their financials as they are before the audit adjustments and then after. So you can always create like a period 13 to track those adjustments separately, but they're actually, they actually have that imported into a year-end adjustment budget so that we can surface the data in Management Reporter so that they can report on it. It shows up in reports, but they're not actually doing the journal entry in GP. So it's an interesting thought. Um, so really you can think of budgets if you're not budgeting, you know, using real budgets. Um, you know, if there's other data that you want to collect that you want to kind of surface in your GP or MR reports, um, you know, you could use the budget feature to kind of house that data. So I just thought I'd share that because it's always kind of interesting when you take a function in GP and use it for something um, else. 